Hello YouTube, it is Damien, and it is another new save here with FM20. Today we are starting a save that I don't know what to name as of starting to record it, but a save that hopefully is going to be quite fun, quite interesting, and quite challenging at the same time, and we will explain why that is in this intro episode one, um, I think that's what we're going to call it. we're still going to call this episode one, even though it really is going to be more of a talkative, what is this save about sort of intro. First thing about the intro, new intro, I'm trying to go away from the big Damon 23 pop-up with the blaring music, I just, I can't monetize the sound for that anymore, it, that's as low as it will go. Uh, so I've tried something new, um, when you see the MacArthur, who is where we are, um, symbol at the end, it means we're at MacArthur duty, and when we see the Australian symbol at the end, it means we're on Australian duty, and that kind of means that we have international management in a save for the first time properly on the channel. We did have glimpses of it in FM18 when we became Icelandic manager, when we're trying to win a Champions League with an Icelandic club called HK. The year we took over as Icelandic manager, we actually won the Champions League, and that kind of ended the save. Um, so we never really went on with that, which, you know, was a bit disheartening at the time because we had a pretty decent side there in Iceland. But um, here we are with MacArthur and Australia. So let's talk about the save and let's see what goes on. As you can see, we have got the Australian, you know, inbox here. And we've got obviously our MacArthur inbox and we've loaded up both. Um, we'll start with Australia because it's probably the easiest one to explain and it is really what the save is about. Um, to an extent. Um, Australia, very simple. We're going to be Australian manager. Um, we're going to go through the World Cup qualifiers. As you know, there's a World Cup in 2022, which I've got my eye on. But the save itself will finish in the 2026 World Cup. As you can see down here, it the countdown is on. Um, the idea of the save is, is by the 2026 World Cup, have got enough youth through the A-League as well as um, a squad that has grown um, around Europe to go and challenge for the World Cup in 2026, and I would imagine that's gonna be the end save date. What that means for MacArthur, who we'll talk about a bit more in depth in just a second, um, means that I want to win the Asian Champions League by 2026 with MacArthur. Now, on paper, that seems quite easy to do. It's many years, and I probably would agree to an extent that if we did get the right squad in, and there's the key word for this intro squad, um, in at MacArthur, we probably could go do that in the fair first, you know, first five years, surely, you know, by the time 2022 World Cup wouldn't surprise me if, you know, depending on how A-League was back in FM9 and 18, you could get through and it doesn't matter which team we were in the A-League, if you found the right tactic, you could win most games. Um, but it would be interesting to see this year what the A-League plays like, if it's a bit more competitive, a bit more to form with Sydney kind of dominating the league, Adelaide United on their day being super amazing and super horrid or Melbourne victory just being quite hard to break down. Um, if it kind of stems and goes like that, it quite, could be quite a difficult save here for MacArthur. But um, in terms of the Australian setup, it's very much about we're building to the 2022 World Cup. The goal would be to probably try and get out the group stage. And then the 2026 World Cup, even though I don't think it would be possible for us to win the World Cup, that would be the aim. Can we go make a semi final? Can we go make a final? Can we go to a quarter final and scare like France and lose an extra time or something? Can we go and just, you know, make an indent? I feel like in Australian football, we've always been happy to just make it to the World Cup, and they've always been happy to, oh my God, we could get through the group. I think we really need to look in Australian football and go, look, we're only going to progress as a nation in football if we start making indents in the World Cup. So I want to do that. In terms of like the Asian Cup and all that, look, the goal obviously is to win that, you know, win that. And apart from us and Japan on paper, you really shouldn't win it. Um, if you lose to Japan in the final, sure. Um, if you lost anyone else, you really got to have some question marks. But it be very interesting, interesting to see what international management is about. And I think it's just going to make a very cool dynamic to this save in general. Now, let's go to MacArthur because this is where the interesting part is. For those that don't know MacArthur or the A-League, the A-League itself is made up of a handful of teams stemming from around the country. And MacArthur is one of three teams now that are going to be located in Western Sydney. Um... As you can see, there's no captain, no vice captain, no key player, no hot prospects. MacArthur don't have a squad when the game loads up. They do not have a squad. Their squad is made up entirely of regenerated, grayed out players because in real life, MacArthur actually only have four guaranteed signings. For the first season of the A-League, I'm not actually coaching or managing or playing a game. I'm pretty sure my whole first year is us simming through because MacArthur don't join the league till the 2020-2021 season. 
I think it's really cool in terms of football manager putting in Mick Carver in that sort of role and in that sort of spot because I do believe that it gives it a very unique element. And the element is this, and the reason why I chose McCarthy instead of going to Adelaide United, who, where I live and who I support um, for this save, is I can build this team myself. I have a full year to build it. And in that year's time, I can put my own stamp in it. If I want to play 4 3 3, I'll go build a team 4 3 3. If I want to play 4 4 2, I can go build a team 4 4 2. It allows me to go for a year and look at all the frees from around Asia, Europe, Australians abroad, Australians maybe playing in you know, Iceland or the lower levels of England or even in you know, South America um, if there's Australians there in the database, who knows. Um, and I can really go get a scout and I really have a look. I can also have a look at maybe players that are coming out of retirement. I can have a look at players that are doing really well in this first year around the, the, Nash, the MPL leagues of Australia or the state leagues of Australia and maybe pick them on form to come play for MacArthur. It's a really cool little way for me to go and say, look, this is my team, this is my club. Let me go build it. Let me go see. The only one problem with that is, is in real life, they've actually made four signings already. Tommy Orr is joining on a free contract at the end of his year already. Um, and pretty good signing um, is Tommy Orr. And the thing is, he allows us to play 4 4 2 or 4 3 3 because he can play naturally either thing. Um, obviously, Australian International as well um, has just moved to Central Coast and is literally in real life was said that he's moving to a Central Coast just to be in the league for a year. So then when McCarthy will come around, he's fit and ready to play. Um, Central Coast, by the way, aren't the greatest side in the A-League this year. If you look at the A-League, I would imagine they're predicted to finish bottom. If you go to the season preview, you were not in it for next for this season coming up. As you can see, next year there will be a 12th team, and that will be us, Mikafa. Um, and yeah, look, it'll be very interesting to see what is going to happen there. Um, in terms of the players that have already signed Mikafa, we'll get to that in a second. And I'll kind of see what I can do. In real life, um, McCarthy have kind of reached out to these players that I know their contracts are expiring at the end of the 2020 season. Um, and as such, obviously signed them on pre-contracts. Obviously, of us being in July of 2019, I can't do that until 2020 rolls around. So in terms of me trying to get in the players that I put into the shortlist to show you in just a second, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. And there's a couple of players I really want. There's a couple of players that I'm like... Well, that's not in real life. I probably should go after them. Um, in terms of everything else, though, the registration rules here um, are very interesting in Australia. There's a bit different. Um, you can read it on the screen there if you really want to. Uh, you know, as you can see, it's all about designated players. Um, it's all about being under certain wage, and then there's obviously salary caps, etc., in there too. So I'm just instead of me reading it out, you guys can pause it. Um, have a read exactly what the rules are as well and then yeah it is what it is in terms of the Australian manager obviously I'm there um, the expectations is the team qualify for the World Cup um, stages um, through the ASI qualifying which is fine in our group we got group six um, as you can see here Afghanistan Bahrain Malaysia and Palestine um, Bahrain have given Australia trouble in the past I think by recent memory and Afghanistan always a decent side as well uh, but really on paper, we should be getting through that group fairly easily. You know, we're ranked 44th in the world. We've got some decent players and Matthew Ryan, who you would have seen um, in the uh, in the new intro, Tom Rogic, obviously, Aaron Moy, Brad Jones, who I don't know if Brad Jones wants to, but uh, if he wants to come home and, you know, be someone that we can do it, we can, um, you know, be someone that we're going to get in, uh, maybe for a year's time at a very old age, I would happily take Brad Jones as a marquee signing. Um, in the end, um, welcome to Australian setup. Uh, as an Australian manager, you have the overall control, including under nine some responsibility to hiring, firing, youth staff, managers, or taking charge yourself. Um, you do you possess international experience in backroom staff with a few lads. Um, obviously, Tony Vidmar, we know very well. He is an Australian, you know, he's coached Australian, um, you know, youth sides throughout the past. Uh, Tony Vidmar, of course, is um, the brother to Aurelio Vidmar. Played for Australia, of course, with Aurelio. Aurelio actually coached LA United many years ago. But yeah, um, in terms of the club vision here for Mick Arthur, um, develop the club's youth players using the youth system. This is also another key thing for me, is that the youth system here isn't great in Mick Arthur, but we're also going to get one free hit of a youth intake before the season starts next year. 
which is great for us to come into it. So be really good with what's going on there. Going to obviously accept that vision. I don't really want to put anything else into play. You know, none of this possession football or anything like that. Not until I know what squad I have to work with. And it seems like the board have made the right decision in that as well. Uh, pre-season, um, negative 600, 232 weeks. I think it's just the game glitching out because obviously when the new season clicks around, McArthur does come in. I've tested it on my Met save and that McArthur do come into playing as well um, and I'm also aware that an online streamer have also done a save with McArthur and that they obviously did get added to the league the year after. Um, look, if this was to come out and then all of a sudden we weren't to go be put into the league, uh, what I would do is I would just probably resign as manager there and go on to a different A-League club that may be struggling but uh, that would be the contingency plan. As I'm aware though, McArthur for this first year won't have any fixtures, won't be in the league, have a full year to develop and bring in my own team and then obviously come into the league the year after and hopefully we can hit the ground running. Um, in terms of our scouting and our shortlist here, these are the players that they've signed in real life. I'm gonna start just work my way from bottom to the top. Adam Federici at Stoke. Everybody kind of knows who Adam Federici is in Australia, for those that are watching that are foreign, Adam Favorici has quite got a career that's kind of lived it around clubs. Um, probably his best and most remembered for being the Reading goalkeeper for quite many years. Had a really good year um, in his early days in the Prem, or it was in the Championship. It might have been this one in the Championship. Um, he also scored a goal that year as well, which I can't remember. But then obviously he went to Bournemouth and played a couple of times in the Premier League, and then went to Stoke as a backup keeper, never really played. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't really play this year as well for Stoke. I don't think he really has for this year for Stoke. Um, and obviously signed for a free in real life um, to McArthur. Matt Derbyshire as well. Um, quite an experienced striker from England. And maybe a few of the English watchers will understand who this guy is. He's currently playing at Cyprus. You know, he's been at Knott's, been at Olympiacos. Played at Blackburn when they were in the Premier League and scored goals in the Prem. So, you know, he's not the worst little signing Um for McArthur, maybe someone I'll keep my eyes on as a marquee signing in the future, who knows. Um, Dennis uh, is a younger 20-year-old that has got a decent passing ability. Um, yet again, people in Australia may be more aware of Dennis than people around. Dennis isn't really one that I would really go for really at the moment. He played in for Zwolle in Holland last year, great. I just think Dennis on Football Manager doesn't have the potential that he has in real life. So for me, someone that has full determination, I don't think he's gonna be overly great. Um, I will try and get Dennis, but at the same time, if Dennis was to go to another club or whatever, I would not really care um, because he wouldn't be my sort of signing. And lucky last, Mark Milligan is the player that is um, that has been picked up on a free by McArthur as their marquee signing. Um, someone that is a very decent midfielder, Mark Milligan, and somebody that I would probably go with for the first time we're in the league, if I can get him on the marquee signing sort of system that we have here in Australia. But at the same time, I don't want to really raise the marquee spot on Mark Milligan at the, uh, as well. Um, because they signed him in real life, I will do my best to try and sign Mark Milligan. But um, here at MacArthur, I don't really know what we're going to do. Um, in terms of the squad here, as you can see, um, all players, we don't really have a youth team. We don't have any, any real team at the moment as well. So um, there will be a youth team. There will be a senior team, as you can see here. We go to the Melbourne Centre, you got your youth um, we have a look at the squad. There's no one really there. They're all grayed out players that are, you know, just whatever. Um, the idea for me right now is to probably go through and scout every player that is in a youth setup in Australia in the A-League. So all the youth candidates in Australia at the moment, all the players that are currently in the database playing for the youth teams in Australia, go to the um, Centre of Excellence in Canberra, it used to be the Centre of Excellence, um, which used to produce good regions. That's no longer here anymore. For those that remember what the space um, things CEO used to be around, it's not anyway, it's now like the Canberra um, CU Academy, whatever. Um, and like the players they produce here aren't as good as what they used to produce as the Centre of Excellence used to back in the saves of FM16 and Co. So um, the idea would be to scout all them, try and pick up some of the best youth for the youth teams. The youth team has, you know, a squad and has the ability to play games in the youth setup here in Australia as well, um, in the youth league. And then um, obviously would be to go around, see who's leaving on freeze. We don't have too much money here. No one really in the A-League does. We actually probably got a bigger budget than most A-League clubs at 25K. Um, and I believe by memory, marquee signings don't go towards your budget wage budget because it's meant to help promote the league. So hopefully we sign um, someone on that in the not too distant future. As you can see, in terms of contract info, 3K would be spent on Tommy Orr at the moment. So, you know, 
in terms of future wage budget would be very interesting. But yeah, that's going to be the save. Um, I think the next time we'll see each other as well will obviously be with us playing against Afghanistan and the World Asian Qualifyings to get into the World Cup. Um, because we won't have games for Mikafa, I will come back and probably show you most, if not all, these games in qualifying. Um, when we have Mikafa kind of uh, here as well, um, and when we have Mikafa, you know, in the league and Mikafa have fixtures. I think what we'll do is we'll kind of show you the only the really important games of Australia and then just kind of recap what is going on um, in terms of outside Australia um, and well, in terms of what's going on with Australia when we're in McCarthy episodes, I'll kind of just be like, look, we played these games, we won them. You know, games against like Palestine and Malaysia where we should be pumping them. Um, I won't really want to show you. We will show you obviously at the start, but we won't show you as it goes on and really save the international games for the World Cups, for the World Cup friendlies maybe that we get. Maybe the big friendlies, maybe we'll get like Italy in a friendly or we'll get England in a friendly and, you know, those games there, I'd really want to show you what's going on. Um, and yeah, so it's going to be a very interesting time. Uh, it's going to be a time where we are going to have to build a squad for a full year and it's going to be very interesting to see who we can sign, what we can sign and how we're going to go about it. But it's going to be a very interesting save, something I've never embarked on building a squad from scratch as well. So hopefully it all works out. And next time we see each other, I've made a signing or two. Uh, I'm not going to rush. We have a full year for me to find players. I know that um, towards the back end of the A-League season, players are going to leave on freeze and I'm going to be able to snap them up as well. So I would like to keep some of my wage available for that too. Anyway, from Damo and everybody here at Mikafa, which is nobody, and everybody in the Australian setup, which is obviously every, every Australian that I could possibly select. Um, thank you for watching episode number one. I don't know what I'm going to call this. I'll figure out a name, and hopefully by episode two, I've figured out a name. If I haven't, then pfft, we'll come up with something. But it was important before I really got into this and really started scouting to get an episode one out. I know it's been a bit wordy. I know it's probably about 17, 18 minutes long. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the new intro, and hopefully you are ready for... Um, a new save here with Mika. If you liked it, please go like, go subscribe. I'm going to try and start doing some more cooler things with the YouTube since the Twitch is coming along so well. Try and get the good YouTube sort of content out as well. Um, and if you have any player recommendations, maybe you live in Australia and there's someone really killing it in real life in the MPL State League somewhere in your state, by all means, drop the name down. You'll probably find them in this database, which is good. And hopefully we will see you next time for some Australian duty and maybe a signing or two at Mikafa.